In this episode of Zoomer Life, I did make a film where uh, I was the subject going through a journey, deciding what I was going to do with my body after I die. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. I don't know how many of you uh, see, get, read Zoomer magazine, uh, but last issue, the new issue, thank you, thank you. Um, last issue, the one with Kim Cattrall on the cover, uh, had a chapter in my Zoomer philosophy wherein I discussed the uh, uncomfortable subject of uh, how to dispose of our earthly remains. And I observed that generally in the Western tradition, we were limited to two options, uh, previously really only one option, but the option of cremation has been uh, gaining significant popularity over the last years. But I also pointed out that there were other methods of, uh, of uh, dealing with the situation. Um, I was trying to contrast the sense of responsibility that my parents had about this discussion in that they had taken care of the problem. They had thought it through, decided what they wanted, bought the plots, arranged for what needed to be done so that we, their surviving children, wouldn't be troubled at a very troublesome moment. And I confessed in this chapter that, uh, of course, I hadn't thought about it at all. And in a survey of my chums and people of my generation, nobody had. Um, we, we not only hadn't done anything about it, we hadn't really thought about it. So um, I, I was pleased uh, when I realized that uh, somebody, uh, a young filmmaker, had actually taken the material of this chapter before I wrote the chapter, but delved into similar material and had made a uh, a fabulous film, pretty much on the same subject. Her name is uh, Connie, and uh, and uh, we liked the film so much that we actually bought it for Vision TV. It played last night, and uh, and we thought so much of Connie's work, Connie Deletti, that we offered her a job, and she now works at Zoomer Media. Connie. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very lovely and warm introduction. Um, so I did make a film where uh, I was the subject going through a journey, deciding what I was going to do with my body after I die. So I kind of did a, lot of the, oh, a little bit of the work for you uh, in terms of research as to what options we all have for our bodies beyond burial um, in the ground and beyond just being cremated. So. One of the things that people think of uh, as kind of an alternative is donating your body to a medical school. And uh, just one thing, basically, after a medical school is done with your body, uh, most medical schools will return your body in a cremated uh, way back to your family. However, there are some select schools that will actually uh, pay it forward with uh, your remains and actually turn some of your organs and tissues into plastic. So I went to the University of Maryland, and here is an example of, um, and if you're queasy, you may want to turn away in a couple slides, I'll let you know. Uh, but this is a small portion of an intestine that's been plasticized in latex. And uh, this is me in the film reacting because it felt just like a Halloween mask. Kind of gross, but kind of cool at the same time. Uh, the process of plastination, and this is that kind of gross slide, this is a lung being plastinated, and what they do is they extract out the water using acetone, so imagine just a big bin of nail polish remover, um, soaked in there for a couple weeks, and then they put the organ or tissue back into uh, a plastic, so this is a lung being uh, plasticized with latex, uh, just sitting in a bath for about eight weeks. There, is, there are two exhibits um, around the world, uh, some are stationary and some actually travel, uh, that actually exhibit body parts and full cadavers. One is Bodies the Exhibit that I went to um, in my journey in Corpus. And so within uh, Bodies the Exhibit, 
there are many cadavers, and although Corpus doesn't have a lot of spirituality in it, the one, uh, there are a couple scenes, and one of the scenes I'm with a very dear friend who is an energy healer and a clairvoyant, and we actually have a conversation with the essence of one of the bodies that's there, and get from their perspective, how does it feel to be an educational piece, really, um, and to donate and gift your body in such a way. Your cremated remains can be mixed uh, with glass to make anything you want. Drinking glasses, vases, fruit bowls. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. So this is some of them, actually I'll go back. They built their own pyramid. They're located in Salt Lake City, Utah, and when we were driving around trying to look for their place, uh, it was pretty obvious to us where they were. <laughs> um, and so they will take 90 days uh, from the moment they get your body to embalm your body, to uh, place your body in a mama form. Uh, this is the embalming room. Place your body in a mama form. And uh, last year, they actually embalmed their first human. Up until then, they had been embalming and mummifying their pets. So there's actually a lot of dogs and cats around <laughs> this place. Um, and so uh, for the price of about $65,000, if you're interested in a price point, you can be mummified as well. Uh, depending on the kind of sarcophagus you want to get, though. Uh, so within Corpus, I uh, personally was unable to time travel uh, to ancient Egypt, but I did send my animated avatar. And so I would like to show you just a little clip, um, an animated clip of my travels in ancient Egypt. For the Egyptians, their body was everything, and nobody was going to give it up that easily. By 3000 BC, they had already decided what they wanted to do with their dead. In keeping with the belief that when a person dies, his ka or spirit can return and re-enter his body, the Egyptians decided on mummification. This is Anubis, the ancient Egyptian god of embalming and friend of the dead. After the deceased had been embalmed, it was said that Anubis would then lead them into the afterlife. Your own private tour guide. Sweet! This dude here, Herophilus, was the first physician to dissect a human body. The only thing is, he usually did his dissections in public and sometimes on live prisoners. He brought performance art to a whole new level. So another notable person <laughs> I had an opportunity to meet, uh, or my animated avatar did, uh, was Leonardo da Vinci, who used cadavers from a, local hospitals uh, to make most of his anatomical sketches. So at this point, I'd like to segue into fine art. Um, there are a couple options that you have with your remains. Uh, one, I would like to go through this woman. Her name is Pat York. She's a fine arts photographer who typically spends her time photographing celebrities. But she took a break to photograph a collection of dissected cadavers. Um, kind of getting co more comfortable with her own death, uh, Pat, Pat made this collection, and to Pat, she said uh, she was inspired because to her uh, we're so beautiful on the inside that it was, it was a, an exercise in discovering really that we're so much more than just the physical overlay of this, uh, this skin veil, if you will. Uh, glass art. Your cremated remains can be mixed uh, with glass to make anything you want. Drinking glasses, vases, Fruit Bowls, uh, a lovely couple based just north of San Francisco, will take your cremated remains and make anything you want out of glass. Um, interestingly enough, this is uh, one woman, she actually created small glass hearts and then they were distributed at her memorial service, so kind of a celebration of life there with a, a party gift. And uh, <laughs> get creative, you know. Um, this is Leslie and Sunny, they're the glass blowers. And interestingly enough, and also sadly enough, uh, Sunny passed away a couple, a couple days ago. And in uh, Leslie's email to me, she said, uh, Sunny's gonna be, his choice was to be buried in their local neighborhood cemetery, which I thought was so interesting because he actually, you know, he created this, uh, this way to, you know, 
utilize cremated remains, and yet his decision was to go into the ground, so I thought that was interesting. These are called cryostats. In each cryostat, you have about four to six people head down because in this philosophy of cryonics, the brain is the most important thing that needs to be preserved. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. Diamonds, not just a girl's best friend. Uh, for just three quarters of a cup of your cremated remains, you can be turned into what makes a two carat diamond. Um, so this is, uh, so basically, DNA to Diamonds is the name of the company. Uh, you ship your cremated remains to Philadelphia. They then ship your cremated remains overseas to Switzerland, where all this magical stuff happens. And three quarters of a cup of your cremated remains, plus a diamond seed and a small carbon disc, within four days of extreme heat and pressure, you have uh, a two carat diamond. And as you can see, I'm very shocked because how amazing is that? Uh, you can also, on a side note, if you don't want to wait until you die to do this, you can uh, cremate a portion of your hair and possibly even the hair of a loved one, and together create a two-carat diamond. Just some ideas. Christmas is coming up. <laughs> okay. So diamonds are beautiful. Nature's, you know, magical gems. Uh, speaking of nature, reef balls, concrete reef balls. You can take your cremated remains, mix them with concrete, and create these beautiful reef balls that will then go uh, underwater, and help replenish underwater um, the environment, basically. So here's me mixing somebody else's cremated remains. It was a very windy day, and a gust of wind came and blew. This was the first shoot we did, and let's just say, hi, hi, death, how's it going? Because when the gust of wind, it was like so real, it was somebody was on my face. Anyways, okay, so you take, you, but you can, you can mix your own, uh, your family or friends cremated remains, and then you basically pour their mixture in a trough, then the mixture gets cast at, into this reef ball cast. It stays there for a couple hours in the sun. When it sets, you can personalize the top with any eco-friendly, you know, handprints or seashells. And then after a couple months, they get cast off the coast. Uh, currently, Eternal Reefs casts off the coast of the eastern seaboard of the United States and some parts of Mexico. Um, you'll also be happy to know you will have a GPS tracker in each reef ball so you can see the kind of underwater activity your loved one is doing. <laughs> Got to get digital. So. Interestingly, okay, so this is a, uh, you know, a water-based, if you, many people who love the sea uh, definitely go with this option. If you feel that you do want to be submerged but maybe not underwater, I might want to suggest to you cryonics, uh, which is basically being frozen or suspended in liquid nitrogen until you could potentially be reanimated one day. We don't know when that day is because the science hasn't met that imagination yet. Um, these are called cryostats. In each cryostat, you have about four to six people head down because in this philosophy of cryonics, the brain is the most important thing that needs to be preserved. And heaven forbid, uh, one of these was to spring a leak, the head would be the last thing that would be potentially damaged. Um, here I am with Robert Ettinger, the father of cryonics, uh, who, who I'm not going to use the term passed away, but was suspended two years ago. Not from school. Okay. If you decide to go this route upon your, your legal death, you would then get transferred here. You, the blood would be drained out of your body. It would be, uh, your body would be perfused with a cryogenic friendly liquid. And at that point, you would be submerged in a beautiful liquid nitrogen bath to cool your body down and to coast you into the cryostat. So it's quite romantic. You can see why Walt Disney maybe chose this as an option. Uh, but if you don't, feel too comfortable with cryonics, but you're still somewhat of a futurist, you might be interested in blasting a portion of your cremated remains into outer space. I say a portion because uh, space travel is still quite expensive. Here I am at Spaceport America, New Mexico. Um, this is uh, an example of a rocket ship that would be making one of those memorial flights, as they call them. 
And you can have three different types of flights. One, and this is, uh, for example, this, the urn that you would be traveling in. So up to a gram of you could travel. You can do one of three flights. You can do deep space, never to be seen again. <laughs> you can do a lunar flight, going to the moon. Uh, or you can do an orbital, where you just kind of take a tour and come back. And then your crewman remains get mailed back. Uh, this is right across, literally, if we had the camera here, if you do this, um, in New Mexico, where at the same time that we were filming, they were literally paving the runway uh, for Richard Branson's space bus. That's going to be taking flight in just a couple years. I wanted to make a documentary that was light-hearted because death is such a, a dark, dark subject that nobody really wants to talk about. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. Eco-burial. Something good for the earth, something that many people are very into um, as far as giving back to the environment, bringing, allowing the body to return to you know, which dust to dust, if you will. Um, there is one cemetery in all of North America that will let you be buried with nothing, nothing, just nothing in the ground, unmarked grave at the side of a very beautiful mountain in Mill Valley, California. Um, there I met a woman, a former Hollywood costume designer who now makes shrouds. So you can be buried in this way uh, without a casket or any type of confinement in this eco-friendly uh, eco shroud that will biodegrade. Uh, so this is uh, one example of Esmeralda's, Esmeralda's shroud. And I'd like to show you now a clip of some of my time spent with Esmeralda. This okay. is the pure light shroud. It's 100% European linen. They can be lowered and buried right in the ground here at Fernwood. These panels, it looks really intricate. Is this, is this a hard thing to wrap up? Traditionally, a shroud is about 12 yards of fabric that you wrap under the body. Because that was so difficult and it looked horrible when it was finished, <laughs> that like I... Like a mummy, kind of old school mummy? Well, like a canned ham, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> a wrapped ham, not canned, but wrapped. So I made this that is really simple for the funeral director and the funeral professional, anyone preparing the body at home or, or in a funeral home. Yeah. And so you just place the body. You're welcome to model if you like. Really? <laughs> you want to give it a try? See what it's like to be shrouded? OK. Go for it, girl. I'll hold it steady. There we go. Perfect. Now just lay flat back. So first, we're going to cover your feet. Then we'll come to the top here, and we will wrap your uh, face. It's getting a little harder to breathe now. Well, <laughs> normally, people don't have that problem that are in your position. And so typically, like, it literally goes this quick. Yes. And you just lower the whole thing down. It can go right in the grave, and the whole thing biodegrades. There you go. You're completely oh. prepared and ready to go inside of a casket in this shroud. Thank you, Esmeralda. I really appreciate it. It was you're, very nice to meet welcome, you. You're welcome, Connie, <laughs> and I hope that, to see you in heaven. <laughs> Basically, in, in conclusion, if you will, um, I wanted to make a documentary that was light-hearted because death is such a, a dark, dark subject that nobody really wants to talk about. Um, so in going through this journey, I started with a fear, with a fear that was slightly paralyzing. Um, and then on the other side uh, of the journey, my realization was it, almost, it matters more to those who are living right? because you're, they're the ones left with it and left with um, a way to appreciate you and like Stephen said, your legacy to remember you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. But I would like to, before I go, thank you so much. Thank you, Moses and the lovely crew, and to leave you with um, a trailer for the, for the actual film. My name's Connie Deletti. I'm 32 and very healthy. I never gave the subject of death any thought. Well, until recently. Do you want to live longer or do you want to die later? And with that, I had a brand new obsession. So I'm starting to think about death now. Do you think about it, Nona? Every day. 
Are you afraid to die? No, never afraid to die. And I started to wonder, what will I do with my body after I die? So I set off on a trip across North America, checking out some of the most amazing options we all have for our bodies once we die. Should my ashes be turned into a diamond? Once that lid is closed, four days later, we can have our two carat finished diamond. Or maybe a piece of glass art. We'll make art out of dead people. Could my remains be photographed? To me, what is so wonderful is what is under the skin. Or used to help underwater sea life. I'd much rather be in the ocean with all that life and action going on around me than in a field with a bunch of old dead people. I could even be blasted into outer space. We fly people to Earth orbit, to the moon, to deep space. Or be frozen for eternity. Cryonics involves freezing somebody in the hope that someday they can be revived. I believe in it 100%. There's nothing in the Bible that says thou shalt not freeze. Join me on this journey as I try to overcome my fear of death and ultimately make a decision. We have one life, one body. What will you do with yours? Once we shake off this mortal coil from Hamlet's immortal words, you know, we'll find it. That was awesome. <laughs>